G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and I'm in Pernham, Western Victoria today to talk to Lisa and Eddie about some amazing innovation that they're putting into place in their 750 acre dairy farm, both technology wise but also environmental management wise. They're managing the whole landscape to improve the efficiency and optimise their business. But before we find out about all these amazing things, why don't we do something even more spectacular and just have a look at the view from their office that they get when they come to work every day. Lisa, Tim, Eddie, Tim, how are you guys? Good. Thank you very much for having us out today. So guys, you've been doing some pretty innovative stuff, not only with dairy management, which we'll get to in a minute, but you're also using some really interesting fencing products to actually rehabilitate the banks of the creek and do a lot of tree replanting. Can you talk us through the reasons why you're doing so much tree re replanting? Well, I guess there, there, it, there are a number of reasons as to why we're doing so much tree planting. Yep. This special site um, really does require some special treatment and so we really are looking forward to regenerating this site, not just for our uh, advantage and that of our livestock, but for the broader community really because we have so many people that visit here and yeah. uh, we want to make it special for them as well. And, and like it, it's a good opportunity today to actually demonstrate just how special this place is. I mean, this is the Hopkins Falls on the Hopkins River um, and we've got the Great Victorian bike ride that's actually been channeled past it. Yes. Um, all those people in life were blocking the highway, <laughs> but um, they're actually really enjoying the view there and they're, they're really treasuring it. And you guys, you guys actually value that. You guys actually support that. Yes, well, I mean, we might be fortunate enough to have the front-on view of the Hopkins Falls, but the Hopkins Falls is owned by everybody. So, talk us through some of the issues that you had that led to your refencing and your revegetation project. Oh. What were the enterprise issues that you were having? Oh, well, we were getting uh, cattle getting caught up in the in the creeks and stuff, and we could see the damage that the cattle were causing. So we sort of yep. felt that it was time to uh, you know, put something back, and so we've decided to go about. Um, protecting the waterways and um, protecting our cattle from, the, from causing trouble as well you know, in, in the waterway. Now Lisa, when we were coming here you were explaining to me a little bit about how when you started out dairy farming every square centimetre of grass really mattered. Yes. Um, but that because you've invested so much in technology and you've increased efficiencies in the business you can now actually run your business a lot more sustainably and actually give back parts of your property to biodiversity and get further gains from that. Yes, and so we've always um, looked to, you know, do plantings um, at, you know, on our property, yep. but they were always, you know, we had to minimise the, the impact really because so we Tiny needed, little lines along fences yeah, and things like that. Yeah, 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 because we just, you know, the debt load and you know, we just had to be able to generate profit. But now that we're much more established, um, you know, one of the really exciting things was when we came down to, to map out this project was let's use as much land as we possibly can. So, you know, whereas we would never have been able to do that once. And you're, you're using a lot of technology like remote monitoring collars and things like that to increase the efficiency yes. of your farm, to increase the efficiency of your labour. So your costs are going down, but you're still producing over 600 kilos per unit of produce a year, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. So we have a very good uh, herd of cows, and and I guess it's you know it, we're not superstars in any particular area. I think that you know we, we just try to do the very best that we can across the breadth of issues that you have to be proficient in in order yeah. to make this job work. Putting in fences, um, it's never a great fun job, no. is it? No, not at all. Um, and so when you put in fences, you want them to last. You've gone with a really innovative product in itself. You've gone with the Gallagher Western fence. Yes. Um, can you explain to me a little bit of your uh, logic about why you would be using this fence around the watercourses rather than just your traditional sort of steel post and, and wire? Oh, well, probably one of the things that turned out to be a real benefit around the Western fences was the fact that we 
wanted to get the trees in whilst there was moisture in the ground. Yep. So these fences went up really quickly and um, you know, really well well designed fences. And once you learn how to put them together, which is a bit tricky for day one, but as soon as you learn, you just buzz them all together really quickly. Yeah. They're solid, they're gonna be there forever and um, you know, uh, uh, the workers love using them and um, you know, they're, they're keeping cows off, off, off the trees sort of safely, you know, they're really good fences. And I suppose for your point of view, coming back to what you were saying about efficiencies, Lisa, that even your fencing choices, if you're going with traditional fences, they're really labour intensive, which used to not be a problem when we were paying $10 an hour for labour, but we're not paying $10 an hour for labour anymore, are we? So we've got to look at new solutions that are less labour intensive. Yeah, and I think too, um, you know, if, if you're going to always just rely on the way that we always did things, then you're never going to really progress. Yeah. And so, you know, we're always on the lookout for better ways of doing things. And so when Gallagher suggested this Western fencing, we just looked at one another and thought of, you know, how is this going to work? But, um, yeah. you know, the results um, speak for themselves, really. Yeah. So, Eddie, what would be your top, say, three or four tips? for someone that's never used this sort of fencing product before to make it as easy as possible? Um, watch the three minute, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do YouTube. they call it? YouTube, uh, watch the YouTube on it. And, Throw the uh, instructions over your shoulders. <laughs> watch YouTube, watch people, YouTube. watch YouTube. <laughs> Don't worry about instructions. Yeah, okay, that is good, correct. tip yeah. number one. It's and also, make... um, the support that Gallagher provided was oh, instrumental. Oh, fantastic, yeah. yeah. So they were a phone call away, so yeah, you know, right just on. give them a buzz and uh, check a couple of things. We didn't make that many mistakes. I was surprised. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, that's a go. YouTube and uh, Gallagher and uh, a bit of hard work. And you've got a steel supporting fence about every three droppers? So uh, three? Every, every, uh, yeah, so you have two in the middle and then you have steel, two in the middle and then another one. And you tie yep. the dropper to the steel dropper. And yep. it works really well. And um, remarkably strong. Um, you know, the, the, once you latch them on, it's remarkably strong. Can you take me through a little bit about how you set this up and why you chose to put the hot wires where you did? Okay, so um, we went with three hot wires, so the top, the one down here, one down here. We didn't want to go... Obviously it's not turned on at the moment. No, it's not turned That'd on at the moment. We've turned it off. Was. We didn't want Tim getting electrified. So um, we did it that way because uh, uh, Pernham's a very productive area and so the grass gets up and can cause short. So we yep. kept the hot wires up a bit. Okay. Um, so we put them in there, then we um, we, hook, we put these pins on here, the star droppers in, and then they hook through these very powerful uh, hooks, you sort of wrap them around with a key and you lock them in, okay. and so that one can't move sideways at all, there'll be no sideways movement in that wire whatsoever. So the only thing holding the western fence dropper to the steel post yep. are these pins? Yeah, and that might seem unbelievable, but if you actually felt one of those pins and give it a thump, yeah, there's just nothing in them at all. They're so powerful. There's only two in it, so the two hold it on, and so it's really quick to uh, put them on. But um, yep. yeah, they're not coming off anytime soon. So you got steel post, two twitches, and yep. normally you know you'd be twitching every wire to a steel post, wouldn't you? Yes, that's right. You only have to twitch two, two. Yep, and, and you move on. Move on to the next one. So so, so how you're saving works. costs on labour. Absolutely. So how it works is is you count how many you're going to require for the fence length. Yeah. And you push the wires through the whole lot of them, and then you just slide them along. Snap them on, yeah. slide along, snap them on like that. It's very quick. So Eddie, we're right in the middle of this little, I would almost call it a culvert. I mean, it's been eroded. You can see that the stock's been walking along the banks here and everything. No wonder you've fenced it off. Yep. But you've actually have to, had to come across the ford here and you had some initial issues and some initial learnings coming across the ford. How did you get around that? Well, um, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. So the, the fence came down and then it drops down into the Ford a, uh, a fair way. So we yep. hooked it all up, set it all up, and then of course all the steel droppers popped out of the ground. Didn't right they? down the bottom so, when you strain it up. Yeah. Yeah. So what we did was, is we, um, we put star droppers in sideways and then tied the star droppers into the ground and it worked yep. really well. We were able to strain it up and uh, with the Western fencing, you can sort of diversify a bit and make things like that work really easily. So we've yep. done that. Then we've had the floods come in and um, yeah. Now how, how high was the water here just to give people a perspective? Okay, so probably about, if you can see me in the camera there, about that high or a little bit higher sort of thing. That yeah, was right. the height of it, so it went well over this fence. So if I'm standing down here, water would have been above my hands? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and have you had to repair it afterwards? No, haven't had to touch it, so that's really good. We've, um, we've got a bit more work to do on the bottom here to cover that up. We'll do that uh, once the water goes away. Yeah. But no, I haven't had to touch it at all. It's held together really beautifully. Uh, been really good. Isn't it incredible like things that that might look like a non-traditional or look like a flimsy fence have actually been a lot stronger than fences 50 oh, yeah, meters away yeah. 
made out of traditional pine posts that are now lying on the ground. Well, we've had we've had trouble for the time that we've owned the place with uh, fences getting carried away by the by the river. So this is the yeah. first time we've really had an opportunity to get something that's lasted through the, the biggest flood we've probably had since we've been here. It's been great. So Lisa. Can you tell me a little bit about this interesting bush that I actually thought was a weed and please forgive me for that? No, no, and I'm glad that you said a little bit, Tim, because I don't know a lot, but yeah. my understanding is that this um, shrub is yep. called a native olive and it's okay. quite rare, um, particularly uh, in this area. So, so this is a highly endangered species in a highly endangered ecosystem. That is my understanding, yes. And unfortunately, it's not a terribly glamorous um, specimen, but uh, you know, knowing how rare it is, um, we, we really want to protect it. It's actually, it's, it's fascinating. When you look at native plants, they don't look like much from a distance, but when you get up close, they're actually quite beautiful. Yes. Um, and this has got quite amazing little olives peppered all over it and I can imagine that it's a haven for really beneficial bird life and native animals. I would have thought so. Now you've got um, quite an interesting story here with the Hopkins River as well um, and this tributary that we can hear behind us at the moment is feeding straight into that through your replanting, yes. filtering it. Um, you've actually got eels and silver perch that use this area for breeding. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Uh, yes, so it's, th this site is renowned for being part of the um, life cycle of the eels and uh, so they make their way up to uh, the, the base of the falls yep. and because they can't get up through the water, um, they go on land. Uh, so you'll actually have them slithering through the grass. Here. Yes, yes. And then eventually they head off uh, north to the Coral Sea, which is something like a 3,000 kilometre journey. Wow. Amazing. And then with the uh, the silver perch, um, similarly, they find their way up to the base of the falls, can't go any further, hang around there for about a month before they disperse again. So Lisa, you've planted over a dozen different species of locally indigenous trees from a local nursery. You didn't just get native trees, you got trees that were indigenous to this specific area. We did, yes. So and that's critical, isn't it? Well, I think so. Um, I look, we wanted to give it every the best possible chance to succeed. And so with the Basalt to Bay Land Care Network, um, they headed us in the direction of um, various publications that have been uh, developed for this region and then it breaks it down further into the specific kinds of regions within the region yep. and so then we sent that off to the um, provider of the, the trees and made sure that the species that were provided to us were relevant for that subsection if you like. So that's going to support your native olives and various other endangered trees because they've got other trees that are hosts to insects that they evolved with. But you're also using these trees, quite interestingly, to control some pretty significant landslip and erosion that you've got along the banks here when there was unfettered access to cattle. Looking after local waterways is critical for the health and well-being of your farm, isn't it? Oh, very much so. And it's not just our farm either, it's all of the other farms and communities and towns, you know, right yeah. along the water course. So as a dairy farm that's high production and high value, um, you're not only not having an impact on the waterways, you're actually improving the health of the waterways through your business. That's the plan. Well, Eddie and Lisa, thank you so much for taking us over your replanting operation that you've got today. I would love to come back at some point and find out more about the amazing things that you're doing with your dairy. I mean, you have people working entirely from home, managing your cows from a computer console remotely, operating draft gates and everything else. You've increased the efficiency of your farm and you're kicking major goals in terms of production. But today we've been talking about how you've been doing amazing things for the environment. And I think this is a fantastic place to finish off. We've got our old traditional collapsed fence in an area that you haven't yet got to. And we've got your amazing replanting over behind you with the really high quality modern fencing that's withstood the recent floods. And I think it shows how people that adapt and change and use technology are kicking goals in the industry and also helping the environment. So thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to spend time with you today. Thanks, Dick. Thank, thank you. Mate. Thank you. Cheers. And guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget, Click on the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag. We'll see you next week, and hopefully we'll see you from Eddie and Lisa's again in the near future. Hey.